I've experimented with a number of tools to do 2D style animation. I can't draw, so I prefer to use vector based tools to express myself graphically. I've had a lot of problems with stability from Envy, and its UI feels immature. It also has greyed out menu options that are actually selectable. Synfig is a pain to use, and the way it does layers feels like the UI was designed by programmers. I've tried to use Blender to do 2D animation. I love Blender for 3D, but using it for 2D feels like I'm using a hammer to drive in a screw. I'm sure these are all good and useful programs, and many talented people have used them to get great results. However, they are not a good fit for me. The thing that works for me as an animation program is DaVinci Resolve. So I wanted to do a few little tutorials about how I animate in DaVinci Resolve, starting with the first lesson for most animators, the bouncing ball. Okay, a, and we have a new DaVinci Resolve project here. I'm going to go up into my media pool and select new fusion composition. I'm going to set the frame rate to 30 frames a second. This is because my OBS captures my VTuber avatar at 30 frames per second. And I'm used to editing in that speed for most of, the, of what I do and makes my animation sort of makes me use, used to the type of animation that I do. So I'll now set the duration to be two seconds and four frames. This will give us 64 frames. The reason I do it this way is because 64 frames is a nice even number that I can divide up evenly, quite easily. So I'll create that. I'll rename that using F2 to Bouncing Ball. Excellent. Open it up in the Fusion page. We have our media out here. We'll grab a background. I just like having a background to work off of. It makes all these other all the compositions a lot easier. We'll take the alpha down to zero so we can layer it on top of something later. Now we'll wide this out a bit. The next thing we will do is use S render because we want to create a shape and we'll merge that in here. And before the merge, I'm going to add and transform. Uh, transform, there it is, XF, which will pass this through. There we go. This means that if I don't want to use the, if I don't want to use the image that I rendered, or the shape that I rendered, I can replace that with an image. Now I'm going to add an S Eclipse to be the circle of our ball. There we go. And you'll be rendered in the middle. That's a bit aggressively white for my tastes. So let's go into here, let's give it a whitey sort of yellowy colour. 
make it a bit more yeah a bit more tennis ball shade and again you could either use an image for this instead or or do some more clever clever stuff with your render shapes to get it to be exactly what you want to look at look like I'm going to set this to be the same as the width I'm going to reduce both of those down to about the size that would look appropriate to what I'm doing there we go now in our transform node let's bring the ball to the top of the screen just so it is clipping against it we'll mark that as a keyframe there we go now i'm going to fast forward to 32 and since i know this is 64 frames long i know 632 is exactly halfway between the two and we're going to bring the ball down and just a little bit more than the distance there we go this will auto keyframe to I'll add an auto keyframe there and then we're going to jump to the back to the end of the scene and we're going to move the ball up to the top so it's there now if we play this we get an animation of a ball going up and down now that doesn't look very natural because in real life falling objects accelerate as they fall so we are going to make use of an animation technique called ease in and ease out and we're going to click on both of these keyframes and we are going to say hit the s button to smooth them and now if we zoom in a bit you can see there is now a curve where it sort of accelerates that will give us a much more natural look so if we go like that boing 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 looks a lot more natural however when balls hit the ground like here they don't just clip through it they actually bulge out as they absorb the the impact this is another principle we're going to have to make you well we will make use of called squish and stretch so if we go down to where it just touches so about there just there going to add another keyframe on both the center the size and the aspect ratio and then we'll go to the other side of that and do the same thing so location size aspect ratio that will expand out out go back to 32 which is our middle most front uh, middle most uh middle most frame so we'll shrink the size of the ball actually we don't want to shrink the size of the ball 
change its aspect ratio so that it has squished down. But the volume of the ball should remain constant because the ball is basically incompressible and it just sh changes shape to absorb that. So we need to increase the size a little bit to take account of that. You've got to sort of like use your judgment. You probably could calculate it out if you had a bit more knowledge of calculus, but you can just do it by eye. Now, if we go to our bouncing ball, we get a nice squishy bounce. Yeah. Boing. And you can add sound effects if you want. Or you could just go boing, boing, right. So that looks a bit more natural. However, when balls bounce up, they actually will overcorrect a bit from this squish and squash. So we will actually want a bit of follow through after this takes off. So at this frame here, so we'll zoom in. So we have one, two, three frames. Let's go three frames more. And we'll change the aspect ratio so it goes out like that. Change the size so it shrinks back a little bit. And now we have it having that nice bit of follow through. And we'll go up to there. We'll go out three more frames. And we'll return everything back to their defaults. And we'll then, if we watch it here, we get a nice bit of follow through from the ball. That's nice. That I like that. Nice sort of naturalistic feel to it. And there you have it. A simple bouncing ball. If people are interested, I will do a whole series of these going through the basic animation exercises. So if you want more of these, please comment and subscribe.